Hello and welcome to the Global Cycling Network World Cyclocross Championship preview show. Now it's a little bit different to normal preview shows in that we are actually here on the circuit in Zolder in Belgium and we are joined by none other than four-time US cyclocross champ Jeremy Powers. Jeremy, thanks for joining us. Definitely, thank you for having me. Great to have a bit of credibility this time. It is. <laughs> for line here, uh, oh, pretty classic. <laughs> So we're going to do a couple of laps of the course, take a look at the key features, and we're going to run through the favourites for the men's and the women's events. Let's go do it. Let's do it. Can you go slowly, Jeremy? Yeah, take it easy. Right, we haven't really gone very far, Jeremy, but the start here you think is more important than at most cross races. Definitely. I mean, every time we're doing the World Cup here, this start straight is really fast. And, you know, a lot of the riders are using a bigger ring, like a 46 or a 48 in the men's race. Um, just for the start straight, they get through that first lap and then you see them pitch their bike and they pick up their other machine because, as you're going to see later, there's a very steep section in the back where you'll want a smaller ring. <laughs> Yeah, yes, this is a good section. This is, uh, if you've watched Zolder over the years, last couple of World Cups and World Championships, this section here is really decisive because you've got this lower line here and then you've got this upper line. Oh gosh. Oh, gosh. I yeah. <laughs> and you see, uh, you can go different ways. If you go high, then you've got to put a little bit more effort out and carry your momentum up. Um, if you go low, then this line gets really gets a lot more water. So you got to take your speed, and then a lot of guys cut through, but definitely will be a decisive moment in this course. So thinking of battles, yes, in the women's race, you know, Talita De Jong, Sophie De Boer could be up there. Absolutely, I think they're both definitely contenders, and I think that we'll see a lot of them over the weekend, and I think that we'll see them, you know, having a part in the race in some way. And in the men's race, it seems crazy, but Sven Nace is probably an outsider for almost the first time in his career. So yeah. he and Kevin Powell. I think Sven's been very good on this course. I think, you know, he'll draw from a lot of experience. Um, I think Kevin Powell is another rider that's not on the outside, but has been able to show that he can be there on a perfect day. He's definitely on the podium and, and potentially a winner. Yeah. Matt, what are you doing here? Yeah, well, I was just helping out some of the guys with the techniques on the Belgians. I thought you'd retired from cross. I come out with time, especially for this. Just... Yeah, because it wasn't already hard enough. I got a lot to give. Oh, man. Yeah, so this is a pretty decisive new uh, section of the course. They introduced this road here um, that comes up basically from that, that uh, those two lines that I just showed you guys. And now um, we came up here for the World Cup this year, go down here and we hit a little bit of a technical section. But it looks like for the World Championships, Belgium decided to build another bridge. And so now we've got an extra climb on top of it, so to make it very decisive. Is this Van Aert's bridge? Is this what they're going to try and do to beat Mathieu van der Poel? Man, I'll tell you, this is definitely going to make the strongest guy win. OK, so you've just stopped us, Jeremy. Is that because you want to see Matt come down this technical descent? <laughs> yeah, I mean, he did pretty good. Yes, though. nice. <laughs> No, this is, um, this is again, a game changer. Uh, definitely a part of the course where you could get pretty injured. If, um, if it's raining a lot, you can see that this is a really high, uh, high risk scenario. So I think it's risk equals reward, right? The more risk that you're willing to take on this portion of the course with speed and such um, is, is definitely a factor in the race. And I'd say the other thing that's unique about this part is that this brings you down to the big run up. And this is probably one of the only places on the course where you're carrying enough speed that you're able to actually take a second reset, breathe, and then get ready for that big run and then the climb that's ultimately going to take you to the top of the course. So you can see these guys are carrying a lot of speed through here. Yeah. And one little front wheel slip and you can go straight into a concrete pylon right behind you there. Well, when we're talking about risks then, who are going to be the, uh, the favorites that are technically, you know, the best? Out of, let's say, uh, Van der Poel and Wout Van Aert, 
who, you know, which has got the edge? Yeah, I think Van, uh, Van Der Poel has definitely shown himself to be very technically gifted. Uh, I think uh, Van Aert has uh, a little bit more, I would say, maturity in the way he's riding. He's, he's Van Der Poel lets it all hang out, doesn't he? Yeah, he does. And I think that, you know, that 99 out of 100 times will work out, but there is that one time where you have too much confidence and you've seen it happen where he makes a mistake and he goes into something. So when you're on the edge and you're trying to win a world championship, that's the moment when something like that happens. So. Um, I definitely think Van Aert has plenty of technical ability to be able to win and, and navigate something like this. So Jeremy, to me, this is all about the dismount, the climb, and then, more essentially, the remount. Yeah, well, like I was saying, this is about the only section on the course where you can do a little bit of resting, so then you have to get off quick feet all the way to the top, and then, like you said, the most important thing is that you're clipped back in because you're hitting about a 20% brick wall right over here that if you're not clipped in, you're gonna have to run. It's gonna cost you a ton of time. Quick tip for running up sand, big steps or little steps? You know, I think it depends on the rider. For me, short steps that are kind of more like the cycling cadence is what I like to go for, and yeah, it works for me. And uh, how about tips for clipping in? Um, Hit the pedals hard and send it. If you're not clipped in, just keep pedaling. What you're trying to say? What you're trying to say? So Jeremy, clearly this is where the big guns are going to come out to play. This is where it's all about power. We haven't talked too much about some of the latest, so either Lechner, Sanacant, all going to come to the fore here. And of course, the three vans. Yeah, definitely. Um, this is an area where you see it all happens really fast. You're off the bike, boom, you need to be back in the pedals. Then a big acceleration up this. You can see that all the riders are laboring up this. And when we watched the World Cup and, and saw what happened at the front of the race, this is definitely where the watts get put down big time. And so I would expect that this is a very decisive, if not the decisive part of the course. Have you, are you going to be putting out enough wattage to have a, a wattage bazooka, do you think? <laughs> I think there's definitely, you could use a wattage bazooka here of okay. spraying the watts. But you can see even on this side, like we've got great riders just pushing their easiest gear and it's still at a low cadence. Okay, so there we go. We've done one lap. This is the finish straight. That is the finish line behind us. There's going to be some seriously worthy winners here over the weekend. We've spitballed a few names whilst we've been riding around. Who are going to be the top three senior men and senior women? Snail, I call to the master. Santa Kant for the ladies. Yeah. Uh, Eva Lechner, Nikki Harris. Really? Jeremy? Yeah. Uh, so I would definitely say that the, my three picks for the women's race are going to be uh, Santa Kant, uh, probably Eva Legner, and I have to pick Katie Compton because I believe she's got a good shot at winning here. She was second at the World Cup. Um, and on the men's side? Yeah, well, it's, it's got to be one of the three vans, right? Exactly. Van Aert, Van der Haar, Van der Poel. I think Matthew Van der Poel, for namesake, is going to take it back-to-back -back titles. I think so too. Yeah, I would, uh, I'm going for Van Aert. I'm going for Wu Van Aert. Really? I think so, yeah. Belgium. Uh, he's got the, the whole country behind him, and I think he's definitely ready. I think he did a big training block, and I, I don't think last weekend was a good indicator of where he's at. I think he might have been bluffing a little bit, so I'm picking, I'm picking Woot. Right, okay. there we go then. Tom? Uh, I'm going to go for Vanderhaar, just to be different from you four. Right then. Cool, so there we go. It's going to be some cracking racing at the weekend. Jeremy, how do you rate your chances before we go? Oh man, I don't know. On a perfect day, I'd be in the top 10. Um, but definitely for me, I just want to have a good race, put it all out there, and, and I'll know after the race if it's something that I'm happy with. Yeah, well, best of luck. Have an absolutely cracking race. Great. Thanks. Now, if you want to see more cyclocross content on GCN, in fact, you do a lot worse than watching Matt's first and only cyclocross race ever. Indeed. You can get through to that just by clicking up there. <laughs> or for some more technique videos, click just down at the bottom. And to subscribe to GCN, how about clicking just in there, probably just to the right of Lasty's ear. Do it. And like and share this video. Yeah, definitely. <laughs>